Hello everyone, this is Michelle and welcome to Genuine Bloodshed. Today's video is titled, Losing Your Daughter Three Times. It sounds impossible, but truth is stranger than fiction and this story couldn't be any stranger. This story took place in North Carolina in the United States of America. This story is partly about a horrible man named Stephen Plattle, and it's his selfishness and, in my opinion, self-hate that would create a whirlwind of confusion and pain for one very sorry mother. Her name is Alyssa Plattle, and in her words, I'm grieving, I'm sad, I'm upset, she said, but I also want to have some good come out of this, if it's to get the truth out there to open people's eyes to incest. I told you this story was strange. Okay, we're going to kick it off from the beginning. Stephen and Alyssa met online. He was 20 and she was only 15. The two started their relationship online and they were soon a real life couple. Shortly after that, Alyssa would give birth to a baby girl she named Katie. Eight months later would be the first goodbye. The couple was very poor, and as I stated, they were young. And in addition to this, Alyssa would say in interviews later that Stephen was abusing tiny Katie. Some reports say he was pinching her and leaving bruises, and it was also said that Steve would put this baby in a cooler to muffle her crying until she would almost suffocate. So for these reasons, Alyssa gave Katie up for adoption. It would be 18 years later when Alyssa would say goodbye for a second time. When Katie became of age, she looked up her biological parents. They were living in this house. Alyssa had given birth to two other children that she did not give up for adoption, and they were living in the home as well. Reports say Alyssa told authorities that Stephen was continually abusive throughout the entire relationship. When Katie arrived, she was welcomed with open arms by her real parents. However, the strange would soon set in. During her stay, Alicia spoke to Katie in private and explained the reason she gave her up was for her safety. Alicia would later tell authorities Katie didn't seem bothered by this confession. After about six weeks, Steve started sleeping on the floor in the bedroom they had given to Katie. After two nights of this, Elisa demanded an explanation and unable to give one and met with Steve's nasty attitude, Alicia took the two younger daughters and left the home. One of these girls was 11. She was the middle child and she kept a diary. Elisa found this diary and had a read. It was then she discovered the explanation she so desperately wanted. The young girl wrote about her upset. Steve and Katie had told the child Katie would soon be her new stepmom. They wanted her to call Katie's stepmom, and there was a baby on the way. After reading this, Elisa immediately called Steve and asked if this was true, and he simply said, I thought you knew. We're in love. After telling him how sick and disgusting he is, she called the police. In North Carolina, you can get up to 10 years in prison for having an incestuous relationship. An investigation was underway, but it would take a while. Steve immediately divorced Elisa, and two months later, the two new lovers were lying on a marriage certificate, and they were legally married in a summer wedding ceremony. Katie wore a short black dress on her big day, and unfortunately, that would be the omen of her life. To make this story even stranger, Katie's adoptive parents attended the small wedding and supported Steve and Katie's relationship. Katie gave birth to her first child in a September. The following January, the two lovers would be arrested on the charges of incest. They were ordered by a judge not to contact each other. Custody of the baby was given to Steve's mother, who apparently let him take the baby to his home unsupervised. Katie did as the judge told her. She called it quits with her real father, moved back in with her adoptive parents, and tried to live as normally as possible while the pending charges and situation played out. Steve, on the other hand, was not as cooperative. Steve followed Katie and her adoptive father one day. They had just left the adoptive grandmother's house. A stalking Steve was right behind them. He pulled up alongside of their vehicle. Witnesses were all around. 
One was a firefighter from New York. He immediately called 911. See, Steve had unloaded a gun into the car, killing Katie and her adoptive father. That would be goodbye number three for Elisa. Steve then drove a bit further and took his own life with that gun in his van. The worst part of this story is the call Steve made to his mom before he set out to hunt Katie that day. 3911, out of the emergency. Yes. Um, uh, my son just called me, and uh, he told me he... Oh, my God. You know, Carolina, uh, he killed his, his baby and he's in the house. Okay, you said that he told you he killed his baby. Oh my God. Okay, ma'am, listen to me. What's your name? Hi, I'm Michelle. I am the voice behind Genuine Bloodshed. I want to thank you for watching the video today. If you liked it at all, please click like. If you want to see more, please hit subscribe. If you would like to support me even further, please hit share. Thank you.